Hey guys, it's Robin, our Silent Crafts, and Miss Mocha, and welcome to my studio. This is my Whip It Wednesday video where I'm going to show you what I was creating this past week. And yes, I got all tongue-tied and confused because Miss Mocha was laying right here. She won't go away. She's been so lovey-dovey lately, so we're going to leave her there and work around her. I have been continuing with the videos and over here on YouTube and on Patreon for the sewing machine mats. I have decided that I'm making two. One I'm going to keep for myself and one I'm going to finish up and put in the shop. The one on YouTube is going in the shop and the one on Patreon is the one I'm keeping for myself. So next week video we are going to discuss hexagons. I'd already had this planned out, but it worked out really well because on the last live stream, we were all talking about doing English paper piecing and stuff like that. Now, while I'm not going to show you how to do that, I do have tutorials, playlists, and videos and all that here on the channel. I am going to talk about different ways of putting them down onto your fabric and stuff like that. So I have two of those. And then over with my Patreons, we worked on Pentagons instead. So for those of you who aren't familiar with my Patreon channel, there's a link down below in the description box. It's another way to get more of videos, so you'll get an extra video every Sunday. They're usually tutorials. A lot of times they will expand on the YouTube tutorial from Friday, or I'll change things up a little bit like we did the hexagons, then we talk about the pentagons, and you can see how the blocks have been. This one's got a background, and I did the spiral. This one is just quilted one this way and stuff so everything's a little bit different and sometimes I just do a totally different one it's another way to support me in this channel and to allow me to keep doing these videos so I'm always very grateful for anyone who wants to support the channel whether it's on patreon or here on YouTube by leaving comments liking the videos, sharing them or even if you're just watching the videos because I want to have six blocks and I don't have enough on my Patreon sewing machine mat, that just sewing machine mat just never wants to come right to my mind. But I had to make a few more. So I decided to do the partial seams hexagon log cabin. I love all of the different colors. I just pulled out of my scrap bins and I got to interrupt here to say I'm really enjoying the way my studio is set up right now. I do tend to turn around and go behind me for my rulers and rotary cutters, which are now over there. So I do at least three times a day spin in a circle, but it's okay. I'm getting some type of uh, dancing exercise, right? Doing a little bit dosi -si do and around we go. But I have been loving having the scraps right here in the room with me. So instead of piling all the bins and bringing them over, yes, they're just in the next room. But when you have to bring over 9 or 12 bins, if you want to do something crazy like this, it does take a few trips and you are piling them up. And they are from the Dollar Tree, so I do worry that they could easily, the handles would break or something. They're a thin plastic. But since they're right here in the studio with me, I can just turn around, take two steps, look through the bin. I can easily dig through it, find what I want, cut a piece off, put it back, and then I made this. I'm really loving this with the solids and the semi-solids, and I did a sort of... I wanted to go for a spiral hexagon, but I did actually do concentric rings. Are they rings if they're hexagons? They're still never ending. And for the quilting on this one, you can see it better from the back. I just did the first hexagon. I left the center open and then I just burst it out and I followed it sort of kind of around. After I did one round, I just moved over and did another round and kept moving over and still did the really close matchstick ones. And I love this fabric. I picked this fabric out specifically from the black bin, even though it has a lot of color. It's got a black background. I thought this would greatly represent all the different colors that were going out. And I tried to pick some of my favorite fabrics. I really love this bright pink, purple always. And I love this candy corn one. It just has the nice oranges and yellows that I like. And when you look at it from a distance, it is a little bit of a hodgepodgey mess, but I like it. And I needed one more block for my Patreon mat. So I decided to go ahead and use the gridded interfacing. I used the one that had the one inch squares that you guys told me are for drafting sewing patterns. And I just used the glue stick and I put two inch squares on it and just glued them down. And it worked out perfectly fine. I had no problem with it. I was still able to fold them all and sew them and do the whole thing. So now I'll be able to use all of that bit that I picked up. It's the leg of a flamingo and I thought it was a fuzzy trying to pick it off. 
So I'm able to use up all of the bits that I picked up at the thrift store. And then I just did the simple double grid where you go down about an eighth of an inch from the center line on each side. Again, I tried to pick out some of my favorites and I believe I was able to get two of every color in here and then some. I used my grays, my whites, the blacks and all of that. I see Miss Mocha has left us. And for those of you that have not been here for the whole ride, let me just show you what we're working with here. I don't know the exact layout and how I'm going to do this, but these are the blocks that I'm working on for the YouTube version. So some of them have a little background quilting, some of them have a little top, top stitch quilting along the edges, and most of them are just quilt as you go, where the only quilting is from when we stitched it down to our batting and backing. Remember, I'm using a faux backing, so this is not going to be the back of my quilt believe I might even have, yep, I have a pink one in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna sew these together and then how I add the backing. And then we'll talk about whether or not we need to add extra quilting and when those circumstances occur. And then I'll have to bind it and that one will be all done. And for my Patreon one, I have very, I'd say dense quilting on most of these. This one doesn't have that much quilting on it, but it still has a decent amount. And then this one is going to be very colorful. Oh, I really like that. That would be nice in a quilt. If you went and did these four corners all in the same color or so that they match the next block. So if you had like four of them here and you put a blue there and a blue there and a blue there and maybe you did the pink, pink, pink. I think that would be really fun. That, that's an actual an idea there. I really do like that. And of course, I do like all of them. So they're all really great. I like how they, I went with separate colors on these. And then I went into just a separate background. So that one's got all grays in it. Each little block here has its own colors. Then I went totally crazy and brought all the colors in. So I'll probably separate these two around a little bit and mix them up just because we have three blocks here. Simple problem to fix really just kind of go like that so that you have your blocks that way. Now over on Patreon, I'm gonna do something a little bit different over there. I'm gonna show them a couple little different techniques, but of course you'll be able to see the finished project on my Whip It Wednesday when I actually finish the project. I think we have just this video next, and then the following week we will be stitching them all together. So in two weeks time, this Friday, you're going to, what is today? I think today might be the 16th. So on the, if today's the 16th, on the 18th, you will be seeing the hexagon blocks. And then on the 25th, we'll put everything together. And of course, with my patrons, it'll be on Sunday. I do have a little yarny goodness. I have a half finished. I have a actual one sock is finished. So this is one of Robbie's socks for Christmas. Last time you saw it, I was way down here. I did get a lot of work done. Poor little Miss Smorzies, my, my smallest kitty. She's five years old. She only weighs five pounds. She actually weighed six pounds, but she lost almost a whole pound because she's currently not feeling very well. I spent a little bit over four hours at the vet on Saturday with her at the little walk-in clinic type thing that our vet has. A Smorzies, for those of you guys who haven't been around before, she's my little tiny calico. She was never expected to survive after we had her for three days and took her to a vet to get her checked because she was having some digestive abdominal constipation type issues. And they said that she would never survive the night. So that was over five years ago. She's coming up six. We got her just before Halloween. So we always do their birthdays around the same time we got her. I think she was really given to us a little bit too early. Also, I think the people knew that she was sick and they just wanted to... I don't know, pass her on or something. I mean, it's terrible to say, but I really think that's how it was. And I, I'm not complaining or anything. I'm just saying that we weren't expecting to get her until just before Thanksgiving vacation. And we ended up getting her just before Halloween. So I don't think she was completely at her six to eight weeks of age. Hopefully we've cleared up the constipation issue. She does have some type of an infection somewhere. The vet doesn't know what it is or what could have caused it. I'm hoping it's just something simple that had to do with whatever's going on in her body with the constipation and stuff. So hopefully she'll be feeling better soon. She's already doing a little bit better with the medication that she's been on and I'm just hoping she recovers quickly. 
All of that to say, I sat there and I sat there and I sat there because you sign in and they take you in between the regular appointment patients, which meant that normally when I go up, I kind of pick a certain time. You can go anywhere between 12 and I think it's like 8.40 or something like that because they, they close at 9. And I thought, well, I normally go up about 4 or 5 and sometimes it's not too bad. Sometimes it's busy. So let me go up more closer to, I'll go at 1 o'clock, 1, 1.15 I think I got there. And yeah, that was a bad idea because there was a lot of people there, a lot of pets having issues, and we waited forever. And of course, as soon as I got out and I went to walk out and pay, which... You know, if you've been to a vet, you're going to pay a lot. But anyway, once I left to pay, I ended up seeing, I'm looking out at the waiting room and there's nobody there. And I thought, oh, crazy lady, next time I am going to go back to going later on in the afternoon or evening because that was just crazy. Hopefully I won't have to go again, but if I do. Yes, so I finished Robbie's sock. I think I was probably about here when I was started working on it there. I got all the way up and then I finished the ribbing at home. I was bound and determined Sunday night to get this finished so that I could show you a finished sock on Monday. So I still have to weave in the ends and all that and I have to, I won't take out any of these markers until I make the other sock. This time instead of having a variety of colors, I went with all white ones and then up here I did all yellow. I've got my jingly butterfly in the back, which is really fun until you're knitting at 10 o'clock at night and the light that you're knitting by reflects off of that mirror. That was fun. So now I just have to do the second sock. If you've been around here for a while, you know Robbie likes his socks so that the legs are as long as the foot, so when you fold it in half, it matches. I like shorty socks, he likes long socks. We all have our own preferences and that's perfect and that's why they make different socks for all of us. The other thing I worked on is I wasn't really, let's see, I took part of Saturday in the morning to do working on a little bit of the video and sewing some blocks. And then Sunday I finished up the blocks and I thought, you know what, I still have all afternoon to work on stuff. I've got like two, three hours left of the day. I decided to just go ahead and work on some more scrappy cards. Some of these are really fun. I like this arrow fabric. I went with some Spider-Man ones. And I'm just going to flip through real quick because there's one that I want to show you. Y'all have seen it if you've been on Instagram. I tried to keep things like Lord of the Rings with some Yoda and then there's some Batman. And then when I did the Spider-Man, I got Ursula and the, uh, what is 101 Dalmatian Lady there. So I tried to mix those up to match together. Look at that one. That one's a really fun fabric. Someone sent me this scrap and I do not know what it's from, but look, there's a waffle there. I found some sewing scraps that were sent to me, so I put them here. This is a little quilting gift. I was probably from some little panel or something with a shop on it, but I'd saved that specifically when I saw it because I knew that'd be perfect for the cards. Just like I saved these little strips that go across like this, I'm finding that I enjoy making them with the strips like this so you can really see the fabric versus just the really small hodgepodge pieces. Sometimes I put it on a diagonal to just give it a little bit. There it is. This is the one I showed on Instagram. Again, someone sent me some of their scraps and it had this little bit of Care Bear fabric in it. The top of the head's been chopped off and then you lose all the body down here. So there's no way I could really easily turn it into a project to put it in a zipper pouch or something. But I thought it'd be perfect size to pop onto a card with some monster eyeballs. I've got some big lips and stuff here. And I thought that was just going to be the sweetest card. Some more sewing stuff just added in. Didn't have enough sewing to put them like all together, otherwise they'd all be the same fabric and stuff, so I just started mixing things up. When they're not long enough to go this way, then they go this way. And since I'm showing you the cards right now, I want to show you one that I received recently. She used her thin bits of scraps, but then check it out. She put all of her thread on it. So like my container here of all old pieces of thread, I have projects in mind for it, but silly me, this never crossed my mind on to go ahead and just put your thread down. She just sewed over it everywhere. There's things you can do with it. You can use wash away stabilizer and stuff, but I think for cards like this, that isn't going to be handled a lot and some people may or may not save them. They're going to be sent in the mail in an envelope. I think it's really fine to just go ahead and sew crazily over it. 
like the way I sew mine down, you can really catch a bunch of it or you can just free motion everywhere and catch it all down that way. And it has tape on it because I have it sitting on the side of my new white cabinet so I can see it. I wanted to make more of these cards because this weekend on Saturday, I'm going to be going live at noon Eastern Standard Time. I go live on the first and third Saturday of the month. So yes, today would be the 16th as you're watching it. So on the 19th, I'm going to be working on the cards and finishing these into actual note cards. And I wanted to make some more because I have these here and these might not take very long to actually finish. I do love, see I save these bigger pieces like this, so even though it's not strips going across, you do have that nice actual pop of something fun there. Oh, there's some more Care Bears. So I'm going to work on these, and I just, as I said, I wanted to have some more. I showed you guys these before. The Mickey fabric is really nice. So now I have a decent pile so I can have a lot of extra note cards made. I really do love sending these out as a, hey, how you doing? Happy birthday. Thank you for this. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for joining me on Patreon. But mostly they get fabric postcards, but these are still fun too. If anyone's interested, I'll put the link down below for how to make these. And I also have them listed in my Etsy shop if you'd just rather purchase some instead of making them. When people purchase them, I just kind of randomly select right off the top of the pile, however many you buy, one, two, four, ten. And then it just goes from there. I don't do, I don't say like, can I just please have the Care Bear one or can I have the Mickey ones? I don't necessarily do that because most of the time I'll already just pick through when I go and mail them out as thank you cards or hey, how you doing cards. I just grab the top one off of the pile and send that out. I don't pick through for that either unless it's something really special and I know I have maybe a birthday fabric in there and I want to send a birthday card. So after I get done with this video, I'm going to be going through my collection of stuffies that I've created and made and sewed or crocheted or knit over the last few years. And I'm going to see which ones I want to pull out and put into the sale. And if I get everything gathered in time, you guys will see another video coming up between now and the live stream. And I'll give you all the information about the sale. I'll show you what I have and we'll do a little bit of chit chat and just go over a couple things in that video. So if you're a subscriber, Make sure you hit that little bell so you'll know if the next bonus video pops up between now and Friday. And if you're not a subscriber, maybe you might want to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you'll know when I pop up on any special videos like this or when the live streams are coming up. I even put some of this fabric in here. So our code word for today, I'm going to go with ribbon because this looks like woven ribbons to me. Thanks for hanging out with me each week. If you guys want to let me know in the comments what you've been working on, whether I remember to say that to you during a Whip It Wednesday or not, you're always welcome during any video to chit chat down in the comments. Let me know what's going on. How's your garden going? What projects you're working on? And even what your weather's like. We had a lot of rain finally, and now we have no rain. And then we'll probably get some more rain later. Right now, the, I think it's the Saharan dust is coming all the way across. And that's great during hurricane season because it keeps those types of storms away. But it also means we don't always get rain. So, you know, you got to kind of balance it out one way or the other. But, yeah, it is what it is. So thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you guys have a great week. And I'll see you on Friday where we are going to talk about hexagons. Bye.